The summer of 2014 saw the first Ebola survivors from West Africa arrive in the United States for care. The third and sickest patient to be admitted to Emory's isolation unit then was Dr. Ian Crozier, although his identity was kept confidential for a time. I left or emerged from Emory after 40 long days and 40 long nights um, as an Ebola survivor. Dr. Crozier's recovery would not be smooth nor predictable. And upon comparing notes with other Ebola survivors from West Africa after his release, he began to wonder whether his ordeal was truly behind him. One of the things that was surprising was to see that 30 to 40 percent of people were having eye uh, symptoms. It was really that that made me pay attention to uh, a very mild uh, eye burning that I was having in both eyes and a little bit of light sensitivity and a little bit of difficulty in seeing things uh, uh, when I was reading. Dr. Jay Varkey of Emory's Division of Infectious Diseases asked Dr. Stephen Ye of the Emory Eye Center to examine Crozier after his discharge from the isolation ward. Soon afterwards, a small team headed by Dr. Ye with Dr. Jessica Shantha assisting went to work on Crozier's eyes, in particular his left eye where he was having the problems. Um, he didn't have any evidence of, of inflammation or uveitis in his eyes, either the front part of the eye or the back part of the eye. Um, although he did have these curious scars uh, within his peripheral retina. Further tests were done on the blood vessels in his retina at the back of the eye where a mild inflammation was detected. He was treated with specialized drops, but the eye worsened over the following weeks. By the end of the year, uh, I could sense hand motions only, but otherwise had absolutely no vision in the eye. As we were thinking about possibilities for what might be causing the eye disease, at the top of the list was um, this Ebola-associated uh, uveitis. Uveitis, or inflammation of the middle layer of the eye, often the result of an infection. It turns out Dr. Crozier's left eye had viral loads even higher than what had been in his blood when his sickness was at its peak. It was a shocking finding to find that the eye was teeming with Ebola virus. We had no idea that the inflammation in the eye was due to live virus in an Ebola survivor who was presumably free of virus. So the implications are very powerful for anyone taking care of Ebola survivors. Under the guidance of Emory's Infectious Diseases Department, protocols at the eye center were scrutinized to make sure there was no danger of Ebola contamination anywhere in the clinic. So my tear fluid was tested and a swab from the white, the conjunctiva of my eye, the outside of the eye was tested and both, despite having very, very high levels inside the eye, were negative. This is very important because the chance of casual transmission in that setting was very worrisome to me. I worried about my family and uh, um, clearly despite having lots of virus inside the eye, there was no chance of casual transmission outside the eye. Doctors also used an experimental antiviral drug in hopes of killing the live virus that remained in the eye. While we don't know exactly its role in terms of blocking viral replication or viral kill, uh, we do know that it made us feel more secure about giving him a higher dose of corticosteroid given locally as an injection for him. And this combination of treatments may well have saved the sight in that eye. As I moved up or I moved down, I could find a place where there was a small portal or a wormhole, I've, I've called it, through which I could see quite well. At that point, I knew that his, his eye had really a fighting chance of recovering significant visual acuity. So I sit here alive, first of all, and looking through two eyes, which is absolutely remarkable for me personally. Of course it is. His prognosis right now, I think, is, is, is good to excellent. I had uh, illness that probably should have killed me. Perhaps because I survived, we're seeing some odd manifestations of the virus. So. The likely thing is that I'm an outlier, um, but uh, until we know more, we don't really know whether other uh, West African survivors will have virus in their eyes. We know that it can be treated, we know it, how to treat it, but can we get in front of it and prevent it? That would be the next step for the team.